Whenever anyone has the audacity to adapt a book for the big or small screen, they're inevitably met with blindfolded accusations that the book did it better, even from those who haven't seen their interpretation. It's just the way of the world and people don't really like it when you mess with something they love, even when it is flawed. But change isn't always a bad thing and neither is messing with the source material, as was the case with the Harry Potter movies, which had a good start with JK Rowling's beloved texts, but the films actually managed to improve in some areas. Not all of the changes were smart and very well received, but there were a few things that even even outdid what Rowling herself had written. I'm Rich from WhatCulture.com and this is 7 Harry Potter movie changes that were completely justified. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to stay notified. Ding. Ding. Done. Number 7. The Removal of Peeves Peeves might have been something of an iconic character in the books, and having Rick Mayo play him would have been something to behold, but the poltergeist served little function beyond being an annoyance. He did have his moments, like taking over the mantle of Umbridge's chief tormentor when the Weasley twins were expelled, but other than that he would have just been an expensive effect requirements for the movies. Leaving him out was, somewhat, the right decision. Number 6. Harry Stands Up to Snape, The Deathly Hallows in the book, when Harry breaks back into Hogwarts, he basically just hides under his invisibility cloak before eventually popping out, but it's the teachers who chase Snape out of the school, with McGonagall, Slughorn and Flitwick driving him away. In the film, Harry confronts the man he believes murdered his mentor, stepping out of a crowd of students, shouting at Snape and verbally battering him. He's protected by McGonagall, but it's a great hero moment at the same time. It adds more to the tragedy of Severus Snape, who has to endure one more moment reinforcing him as an irredeemable villain before Harry's ultimate realisation. Plus, it does fit that Harry would be this reckless and impulsive. Number 5. Ron Stops Harry Leaving, The Deathly Hallows in the book, all three of the magical heroes plan their quest for the Horcruxes before Bill and Fleur's wedding, but in the movie there's a new scene which Harry attempts to leave without Ron and Hermione. Ron discovering him and convincing him to stay and let his friends come with him gives him his own hero moment and finally explains why he belongs in Gryffindor. It's also another opportunity to reinforce the core principles of both characters. Harry is the selfless martyr and Ron is his ever-dutiful Samwise-like companion. Number 4. Voldemort Possesses Harry the Order of the Phoenix. After the already excellent battle between Voldemort and Dumbledore in the book, Voldemort does possess Harry briefly to make Dumbledore have to choose to kill Harry to defeat him. The film version is extended and when Voldemort possesses Harry, he has a conversation with Dumbledore and we get to see flashbacks of deaths as if Voldemort is torturing him while he taunts Dumbledore. But then Harry fights back, drawing strength from those who lost their lives because of him and focusing on the love of his friends before telling Voldemort that he pities him for never knowing love or friendship. It's that great moment that basically distills all of their relationship in one exchange and focuses on the central theme of love in the series, and it is a great addition. Number 3. Sirius and the Order Photograph in The Order of the Phoenix, Mad-Eye Moody shows Harry the picture of the original Order of the Phoenix, but the film reversion places Moody with Sirius, giving Harry and his godfather a closer moment which makes a lot more sense. In the films, the relationship between Harry and Mad-Eye is severely downplayed, and it's the right move given that Harry's close relationship with Moody in the Goblet of Fire was actually with the imposter. The movie Mad-Eye is more of a cantankerous sort of fellow, and having him share an intimate moment with Harry would have been… odd, to say the least. It made far more sense to write in another opportunity for Harry and Sirius to bond instead. Number 2. The removal of Spew. In the books, Hermione forms Spew, the Society for the Protection of Elfish Welfare, as an expression for her humanity, and it's a plot that sees the introduction of House Elf Winky and more focus for Dobby. Rather than introduce Hermione's campaigning, the film simply cut Winky out entirely, and Dobby was dropped out of relevance for four films, only returning in the Deathly Hallows. It's a shame that Dobby gets sidelined, though having him in more would just make his death more upsetting, but Spew would have been no more than a needless distraction, so yeah, maybe it's heartless, but it was the right decision in storytelling terms. Number 1. Hedwig's Death during the Battle of the Seven Potters, Harry is discovered when he disarms Stan Shunpike rather than taking more drastic measures against him. It's a moment showing Harry's humanity once more, of course, but the film did it better. Hedwig is then killed by a killing curse aimed at Hagrid as she sits in her cage on the motorbike, dying instantly to Harry's dismay. In the film, Hedwig isn't cooped up in her cage during the battle, she's flying free when Voldemort and the Death Eaters attack ultimately sacrificing herself to protect Harry from a killing curse and revealing the true Harry. It's a very touching moment and a far more fitting end for Hedwig, who is killed off rather unceremoniously in the book, and it adds an extra emotional beat to the end of her story, which is always welcome. Well done, you made it all the way to the end of the video. Now, I'm not just here to increase our market share with women aged 18 to 35, but to tell you to watch one of these other videos we've made that are probably quite good. So, go on, I'll feel that one or that one. They're both, there, there you go.